What's up? This is going to be an unboxing and overview review of the Lenovo Flex 5. And um, I bought this computer as a replacement for the Lenovo Yoga 3 14 inch. And I really love this computer. I wanted, I actually wanted one just like this, other than the fact that um, this is a bit old and I would like a little bit more RAM. But I did love this computer. I loved the look and feel of it. I loved how it worked. Everything about it, I loved. Um, but I fried it. I plugged it into a power source that must have been, must have had a short or something. I don't know what happened, but essentially smoke started coming out of the back of it and I could never get it working again. I tried replacing a bunch of things, even tried a new motherboard and I, I just couldn't get it to work. So I love this computer. I wanted something similar, uh, but I was hoping for something with a little bit more RAM and, um, you know, an upgraded hard drive and, and, I was hoping that I could find something with an even better uh, CPU. So with all my research, I, I stumbled across this one and it seemed like this was going to be better in pretty much every way. It's got the same size screen, 14 inch screen, but it's a smaller uh, uh, overall package. And so I thought, well, that, that's a plus. It, it's a little bit smaller, lighter, and uh, same screen size. It also has more RAM. It went from, I went from eight gigabytes to 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, got a solid state drive, but went from a, a 256 gigabyte to a 500 gigabyte drive. And also um, it's got the new AMD Ryzen 47 U. I don't know much about CPUs, uh, but everything that I could find online was saying that this was a pretty damn good CPU. It's like eight core, whatever that means. I don't even know, but supposedly it's better. Uh, so this just arrived in the mail today and I paid for it out of my own money. So this is not a sponsored review. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed with the packaging on this. Um, the Yoga 3 came in this pretty nice package which you know i mean it's a package it's it's a cardboard box but it's a pretty nice one obviously they spent some money on the printing it's got a lot of ink it's got this plastic handle it's not a lot but when a company goes to those lengths to make their product look good from the first impression that's a good sign and so when this package came up came uh, came here i was a little disappointed it looks a little um generic and I don't know we'll see but Lenovo come on you got to get your crap together uh that even the the branding looks sort of generic it looks like you know they just pulled a font off of Google fonts and and uh and put it on a background that they they pulled from some stock image site or something I could have designed this it it's fine whatever but anyway, initial impression is that Lenovo seems like they're trying to cut costs in some way. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I mean, that, that's not necessarily a bad thing. We'll see when we open up the package and look at the computer. But um, initial impression, I'm a little bit disappointed. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Let me grab a knife. It's got this seal right here. So go ahead and cut that. Lenovo, sort of okay products. That's <laughs> what this seal says to me so far. Okay, let's see. The first sign that they care at all about the look of their packaging. All right, let's see. open up this and. All right, we've got this power cord here. Um, one thing that surprised me about this power cord and, and sort of disappointed me is that it's a USB-C, which is fine, other than the fact that that's one of the ports on the computer itself that I can't use when I'm charging it, um, which would be fine. Uh, the, the Yoga 3 had a similar port. It had the... Um, one of the USB ports was the charging port, 
But the weird thing about this one is it has an additional port. It's got another charging port. So why did they use up one of the, or use up the USB-C port for charging when it has a charging port? Uh, that just seems kind of stupid. Like I'm probably gonna end up buying another charger just so I can utilize the USB-C port uh, for something else. Uh, so anyway, let me go ahead and pull this out of here and we'll take a look at the computer itself. All right, getting this out of here. Nothing else in that box. All right, you get your crappy folded up papers. Come on, Lenovo. Okay, pull this thing out of here. All right, hmm, let's look at this. Okay, I know this is plastic, and just from other people's reviews, uh, these are probably going to be metal, I would hope. Can't really tell. Plastic here. All right, let's go ahead and flip this over. Back over, take a look at this. <laughs> all the reviews of uh, similar units all <laughs> talk about the one-handed opening. I don't know why people care about that so much, but whatever, let's see. Yeah, sure enough, you can open it with one hand. Wow, who cares? Um, all right, so. Lenovo services, uh, yeah, whatever. All right, it looks pretty good. It does look pretty nice. I actually saw one of these units at um, Staples and I was pretty impressed. The keyboard looks pretty solid. It's not flexing very much. I mean, a little bit, but not bad. Really not bad, it feels good. Um, some of the other reviews about similar units talk about um, how the keys don't have a lot of travel. That is good in my case. I, I prefer that. I don't like the, I, I don't like physical keyboards or whatever they're called where they make all that noise and, and uh, the keys move a lot. To me, that's more work that I have to do to type. This is really simple. I can tell that I've typed on the keys and it's good enough for me. This is also a backlit keyboard, which is nice. Trackpad looks nice. Um, I did see some reviews of people talking about, again, similar units to this and saying that the trackpad was too clicky or something, too plasticky. Um, I don't have that opinion. To me, this is good. I mean, I can tell that I clicked the button. It's uh, It feels fine. I mean, yeah, it's not like a glass trackpad, but what do you expect? You're not spending a thousand dollars on this. It's yeah, it's still a lot. I think this one was about 700 on Amazon. Um, so anyway, let me get this powered up. I'm going to go through the entire setup process with Windows and then um, and then I'll I'll uh, check back in with you. Oh, real quick. One thing I wanted to see is does this thing have power right off the bat? And let's go ahead and hit the power button. And let's see. Come on. Oops, it's not doing anything. So either there's no power, I'm pushing the wrong button, something. All right, so let me go ahead and plug this in, get it powered up, and go through the setup process, and then, I'll, like I said, I'll check back in with you. One more thing. <laughs> uh, I know some of you nerds, like me, like to see this stuff get peeled off. So just for your satisfaction. Cool. Looks nice. Now 
we have some important setup to do. All right, so I got the computer up and running. It took about mm, probably 20, 30 minutes to get through all the questions that the Windows setup process was asking me. Uh, it's, uh, man, a little tedious, but once you get through it, uh, there's not a whole lot of bloatware installed on here, which is good. Um, let's see here. I've got the Lenovo pin settings. I'll probably leave that because I'm, I might buy the pin. Uh, some of the, uh, Amazon listings do come with a pin, but I didn't choose one of those. Um, so I might buy a pen. It also includes this Lenovo Vantage service. I don't know a lot about that, but that's what this is here. Um, I, from what I could tell, this might actually be fairly useful in, in making sure that I have the most up-to-date uh, drivers and, and other software that will make the computer run well. However, I don't like bloatware, so we'll see. I'll, I'll try running it for a while and see what happens. Uh, what else is on here? McAfee, or however you say that, I'll probably delete that. Uh, Microsoft Office, I don't want to pay for Microsoft Office, so you do get a trial version, but I don't, I'm uh, not going to use it. And then OneDrive, so I'll be uninstalling those three. And then Google Chrome, I just put that on here myself. That's a, like the first thing I do and the only reason I use Microsoft Edge. So now I can unpin Microsoft Edge. I don't think you can delete Microsoft Edge, but if I if I can, I'll do that too. Although it is nice if uh, if for some reason Chrome isn't working or something, it's nice to have that additional browser. So anyway, um, the computer is setting up or is it installing Creative Cloud right now. Uh, that's pretty much what I bought this for is to use Adobe. Otherwise, I would have bought a Chromebook because most of what I'm doing is on Google Chrome, but there is just no option for using Creative Cloud on a Chromebook that, that I could figure out. I mean, I think you can install it on Linux or something, but I don't know. It looked like a pain in the butt. So anyway, um, we'll see how this works. Some of the reviews that were uh, on similar devices were saying that because of the way that Adobe works, um, it isn't able to utilize the CPU as well as it should. And so certain um, products from Adobe won't work as well as, as they should. Um, and from what I heard, that's on Adobe's end, not really a problem of um, AMD, but it, it I don't know. It seems to be like they're not really able to, AMD is not able to utilize, or, or sorry, Adobe is not able to utilize the power of the AMD uh, chip. So we'll see how that goes. I haven't been able to test it out yet. Um, I'll probably record just a little bit more of um, my thoughts on how Adobe ends up working once it's installed. Um, but I, I'm thinking that the CPU is fast enough and the fact that it's a solid state drive and it's got 16 gigabytes of RAM, I think I probably won't have any issues. I'm not doing like intense video editing or 4K. I mean, I don't really, I don't have a 4K camera, so I'm never going to be doing 4K video. At least that's not my plan anyway. So I'm not expecting to see um, any any like bad effects from Adobe not being able to use a CPU. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, like I said, I'll probably record a little bit more of just my thoughts on how, how it went trying to use uh, Adobe. So we'll see. Uh, as far as the rest of the computer, I mean, it's just Windows, so I don't really know. I, I don't know how to do all of the testing, and uh, I wouldn't care anyway what the test results are. It's really... To me, it's about real use, and so far, just clicking through stuff, uh, it's pretty much like Windows. I don't know. <laughs> it works. Uh, as far as the unit itself, it's got two USB ports over here. It's got the micro, or sorry, the SD card slot. I like that the power button is here. 
to me, this sort of compares to the HP 360, I think it's called. And the HP 360 has a power button up here that people were having issues with. Like, they would have to wait for the power to die down sometimes in order to get it restarted. And so um, I like that it's got a dedicated power button over here on the side. Uh, the other ports that are available are the headphone, microphone and headphone combined jack there, and HDMI, full HDMI, rather than uh, the micro HDMI that the Yoga 3 had. And then, of course, the USB-C that I can't use because the charger's plugged in. Um, I Like I said, I'm probably going to buy one of the chargers that uses the barrel pin connector. I don't know why they didn't just provide that. Like, what's the point? I mean, sure, it's kind of cool that you can charge it this way, I guess. But who cares? If it had the barrel pin connector, then I would just use that. So I don't really understand what the point of providing this USB charger is. All right, so the keyboard, uh, you can tell it's got these different brightness levels. I guess two. And then off. Yeah, looks fine. And the lights are off. Uh, yeah, I can see that, you know, when it's dark outside. Uh, one of the things that people were talking about was this screen and saying it's not bright enough. I do have the brightness all the way up. Um, that's bright enough for me. I don't know. I mean, the lights are on in here, and I can see the screen just fine. I'm not having any trouble seeing the screen. Now, sure, out in the sun, uh, yeah, it's not going to be bright enough. But, uh, I mean, that's fairly that's a fairly common issue with screens in general. So um, certainly there, you can buy computers with brighter screens. Pretty much every other version of this kind of, like, like a computer with the AMD Ryzen 7, um, I think the HP uh, 360 NV or whatever it's called has that. Um, I, I believe there's a Dell as well, similar, and they all look pretty much the same. They look like the same kind of computer. Um, I think they all have brighter screens than this one is. So if that's a huge issue to you, then buy the Dell or the HP, I guess. Uh, but for me, I, I wasn't too worried about it. I, I didn't really know about that problem before I bought this. I mean, I didn't, it wasn't something that stood out to me. But it's obviously not something that I care about that much. So it's bright enough for me. I don't, you know, if you're the average user and you're not going outside all the time, then you're going to be fine. Now, as far as the rest of... My review, I think that I'm going to have to wait until I play around with uh, Photoshop and, and uh, Premiere Pro and see how that goes. If that's super slow and um, like unusable, then that's, the, that's going to be sort of the last, um, last thing that, the last possible thing that could really bother me. This computer seems pretty good so far. It does have this little... Um, privacy slider right here for the camera you can kind of hard to do but you can use your fingernail and slide it uh, so you can looks like left is closed camera off and right is open camera available to be used so anyway that's kind of cool I guess for people who care about that, it's a physical slider. It's something actually sliding over the top of the lens. So you're, there's no way that somebody's going to be able to hack in your camera that way. So that's cool. Of course, they could still hack in your microphone and hear everything that you're doing. But <laughs> that's life, right? Nowadays. So anyway, thanks for uh, watching this. And like I said, I'll, I'll check back in with you when I've um, been able to use Creative Cloud a little bit and I'll know a little bit more about how this is going to work for me. So far, so good. So it looks like I was wrong. There's actually a lot of extra crap on this <laughs> computer. It's just all hiding in the apps and features section of your settings. So anyway, I'm going to go through here and delete as much of this as I can or uninstall as much as I can. Um, so. 
If you're wondering where all the bloatware is, that's where it is. It's hiding in here. Go to Control Panel, search for Apps and Features, and you'll find it. All right, I've been playing with this computer for the last, uh, you know, a few hours, and I've got Photoshop on here, Premiere Pro, Audition, and everything seems to be working pretty well. The one thing that I was testing out is, can I edit a web m file or whatever they're called it's a, sort of a standard video file that's online uh, and if, premiere pro has issues with that but i don't think that was related to this computer specifically so um, other than that i haven't had any issues and as far as the time it takes to load and everything let me go ahead and close these so you can see how long they take to open and no i don't need to save any of these and nope. All right, so let's go ahead and open those up. Let's start with Premiere Pro. That tends to take the longest. This is kind of a typical way that I would assess how <laughs> slow the computer is, is how long it takes to open up Premiere Pro. And boom, it's already open, so anyway. Let's try Photoshop. You got the loading screen there for a few seconds. Maybe like, what is that? Eight, 10 seconds and it's open. All right, let's go ahead and try Audition and boom, Audition's the fastest. So anyway, no, no problem there. One thing I was gonna say is that some of the reviews for this computer or computers in this line Talk about how the screen is dim and yellow. Uh, I haven't seen that, but I did go ahead and adjust the color just a little bit, just to my liking. Uh, and you can sort of, it's kind of a hack, but you can kind of make it look brighter by washing out the colors a little bit. And you, you use this AMD utility and, um, and you can go in here and change some of these settings. But under here, under the display section, you can adjust the color temperature and here are the settings that I have on mine. I've got color temperature set at 7200, brightness at zero, but again, you can kind of wash out the colors a little bit and it, it looks brighter. So I don't know if you want to do that, but, um, I didn't, it might be one way that you can get a little bit more, at least perceived brightness out of this screen. Um, and then I set the hue to negative one, the contrast to 99, and the saturation to 104. Um, for me, that looked pretty good. I, I based that off of, you know, looking at some pictures on Facebook and on the web and just trying to kind of do it by eye. And to me, these settings seemed a little bit better. Uh, I don't know if these settings will have any effect on... Um, on the Adobe software experience, I was kind of hoping that I might be able to kind of force some of the settings on this side, and then that might enhance the, um, or, or make the Adobe suite software a little bit faster. Uh, I don't know if that's the case or not, uh, but I haven't seen anybody talk about this radon software and from from the looks of it, it looks like pretty good software that might be useful to you. So go ahead and check that out. It's one of the things that most people would consider bloatware that I'm not really sure if I would. And uh, on that note, the other thing that I was talking about earlier is this Vantage software. I like it. Uh, it's probably slowing down the computer a little bit, but it's got this check for system updates section. And I found a BIOS update through that. Uh, you could certainly do this on your own through Lenovo's website, and you may even be able to find uh, software updates like that through Windows Update. Uh, but I don't think I did find this through Windows Update, and I did find it on here. So for me, I think this is useful enough to keep around, at least for now. If, if I keep it for a while and I haven't seen any new updates come through, I may go ahead and uninstall this. Un uninstall this. But for now, I kind of like this software, Lenovo Vantage, and I like the Radon software. So 
Two things that would most people would consider bloatware, I think are pretty good pieces of software. Uh, one thing that I was not able to get to work, and that is a common thing, and I don't think it's the fault of Lenovo, I was not able to get my Bluetooth headset paired with the Bluetooth on this device. Yeah. I don't know why that is. I don't think it's the fault of Lenovo necessarily, but, um, but maybe it's just the driver for that Bluetooth. I'm not sure. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can find another driver or something and get my headset paired up with it. But other than that, I haven't had any issues. Everything seems to be working great. Uh, one thing that I should probably show you is the startup speed. Let's go ahead and shut this down and I'll start it from the button over here once it's off. Okay, now it's off. All right, push the button and let's see. Boom, it's, it's up. So it's one of the fastest uh, startups I've ever seen on a computer. That's, that's pretty impressive. Uh, the fan noise is a little bit noisy. It's not too bad, but I definitely hear it. I think you can turn that off based on, um, I, I mean, there, there's some kind of a, an adjustment based on the, the performance of the machine, but I don't know where that setting is and I haven't, I haven't looked around for it. Uh, I prefer it to be as fast as possible and I don't mind the noise too much. So uh, you be the judge for yourself. Uh, all right, that's about all I had to say about this. I, I think I showed you all the ports. I showed you everything else. HDMI. I'm going to go ahead and use this device for a while and, and see, uh, see how it goes. Let me know what you think about this device, if you're going to buy one, uh, and, and how you like it if you do. Oh, one last thing. Come on. There we go. Mission accomplished.